In my previous video I showed you how to get the correlation coefficient in three simple steps. And the first one was that you fit a straight line to your scatter plot. And then in the second step you would remember if your slope was positive or negative and that would tell you the sign of your correlation coefficient. In the third step you had to compare the scatter along the y-axis against the scatter around the fitted line and that would tell you the magnitude of your correlation coefficient. Maybe you're wondering why we're doing all this. After all, we could use something much simpler, like the slope of the fitted line, for example. That would summarize the scatter plot somehow, and it would be positive if the overall trend is positive, and negative if the overall trend would be negative. But it actually turns out that the correlation coefficient has some really neat properties, and I'll show you the first one with an example. Here are two scatter plots, and in the second one you can see that I've changed the x values. I've multiplied them by two. So the movie that in the first data set used to be 60 minutes long, now it's 120 minutes long, and so on. Now the question is, which of these two plots has the larger correlation coefficient? Let's go through our three steps. The first one is to fit the straight lines. So they would go here and here. And of course they are really different. The second slope is just half as steep as the first one. Now the second step is to remember if the slope is positive or negative. In our case both slopes are positive, so we know that both correlation coefficients will be between 0 and 1. Then comes the third step. In each plot we have to compare the scatter along the y-axis against the scatter around the fitted line. Now let me draw in the y-axis values first. You can see that they actually are the same in both plots, and that makes perfect sense because in the second one I've just multiplied the x-values the movie's length by 2. How about the scatters around the fitted line? And you can see that actually the distances between the fitted line and the data points has stayed the same in both data sets. So now we have to make the comparison in each scatter plot between the y-axis scatter and the scatters around the fitted line, but both the y-axis scatter is identical in the first plot and the second one, and the scatter around the fitted line has also stayed the same. So that means that in both plots the correlation coefficient is the same. And that's really useful, because it means that the correlation coefficient doesn't care if I multiply my x values by a positive constant. Now what happens if I multiply the x values by a negative constant instead of a positive one? So here I've taken all the x values and multiplied them with minus 2. In this case, the sign of the correlation coefficient flips, because now the slope is facing downwards, so the correlation coefficient is negative. But still, the scatter along the y-axis and the scatter around the fitted line have stayed the same, and so the magnitude of the correlation coefficient is unchanged. Now, why is it useful that the correlation coefficient ignores when we multiply the x-values by a positive constant? For example, it means that we can switch the unit of the x-axis without changing the correlation coefficient. Imagine that I'd like my scatter plot to be in hours instead of minutes, so I'd have to multiply all my x values by 1 over 60, and now we've seen that that wouldn't change the correlation coefficient. So that's good, but now let's see what happens when we multiply the y values by a positive constant. Okay, I'm kind of lazy, so I'll just change the y-axis labels. I'll make the 1 to a 10, the 2 to a 20, and so on. So effectively, I've multiplied all the y values by 10. Now, what has changed by me doing that? Okay, for one, the slope of the fitted line now is 10 times as steep as before. Before that, the slope was something like 0.7 stars per 10 minutes, but now it's something like 7 stars per 10 minutes. How about the y-axis scatter? Well, the y-axis scatter is also 10 times larger, because all the y-values have increased by factor 10. And how about the scatter around the fitted line? Here too, all these distances have become 10 times as long. So this is interesting, because it means that in comparison to the scatter around the fitted line, the y-axis scatter hasn't changed at all. Both of them have increased by factor 10, so nothing has changed in their comparison. This is great, because it means that the correlation coefficient also doesn't care if we multiply all the y-values by a positive constant. Again, if I had multiplied them by a negative constant, the only thing that would have changed is the correlation coefficient's sign, but not its magnitude. So the correlation coefficient also doesn't care about the change of unit for the y-axis. Now, this is actually more dramatic than it might appear on the first look, because what it means is that I can completely cut off the units from a scatter plot, and you can still tell me what its correlation coefficient is. 
The plot on the left will always have the larger correlation coefficient, no matter what the units of these plots used to be. And that's because we can multiply the x values and the y values by any positive constants we choose. So we can change the units as we like without affecting the correlation coefficient. This is one of the major differences between the slope and the correlation coefficient. The slope is totally dependent on the units, so if the units change, the slope also changes, and you can only make sense of the slope if you also know the units of the axes. The correlation coefficient, on the other hand, is totally independent of the units, and you can interpret it without even knowing them. The correlation coefficient doesn't only ignore scaling of the data, so multiplying the x or y values with a positive constant. It also ignores shifting of the data, so adding a constant to the x or the y values. And that kind of makes sense, because if I add something positive to all the x values, that just results in the data getting shifted towards this direction, while if I would add something negative, the data would get shifted in this direction, and the same for the y-axis. And clearly this kind of shifting doesn't change the direction of the slope, and it also doesn't change the y-axis scatter or the scatter around the fitted line, so the correlation coefficient doesn't care. So the correlation coefficient doesn't care about scaling the data with a positive constant, and it also doesn't care about shifting the data with any constant, and we've seen that it's really useful because it sets us free of units. But the correlation coefficient also ignores a few really useful things, and those all go back to it fitting only a straight line to the data. If you look at a dataset like this, you can definitely see that there's some interesting structure in it. The really short movies get great ratings, the medium long movies get really bad ratings, and then the really long movies get good ratings again. But if I would fit a straight line to this, you can see that it's almost level. So that means that the correlation coefficient will be very weak in magnitude. It just fails to capture this interesting structure in the data because it's all based around a straight line fit. It's a bad idea to use the correlation coefficient to summarize a scatter plot like this, because the straight line fit is missing out on the most interesting part of the data. And whatever summary statistics you use, it's your responsibility to make sure that it gives a fair picture of the data you have. To summarize, we've seen that the correlation coefficient doesn't care if you scale the data along the x or the y axis with a positive constant. And if you scale the data with a negative constant along one of the axes, so x or y, then the magnitude of the coefficient stays the same, and only the sign switches. Also, we've seen that the correlation coefficient doesn't care about shifting of the data, so adding constants to the x or the y values, and that this is both really useful because it makes the correlation coefficient independent of the units. But unfortunately, the correlation coefficient fails to capture some unusual shapes in the data, and you will have to watch out for that. Now in the next few videos I'll introduce you to some very little known and really surprising paradoxical effects when it comes to correlation.